I didn't anticipate running in 2020. I've really been focused on how do I become part of the solution to many of the challenges that I saw growing up. Part of an immigrant family, grew up living paycheck to paycheck. Some months we weren't sure, you know, whether we were going to have enough to pay the rent, pay the car bill, and pay for groceries. It's those sorts of challenges influence why I'm doing anything that I do. I'm Ricky Hurtado. Okay. If you want to take one of these, we're just dropping them off at folks' houses. If you want to take one, this is. So I'm really running to be a, a different type of representative to actually okay. fulfill that word that says representative. Uh, I'm, I'm really accessible. Here's my phone number and my email. If there's anything going on that you want me to know about, you, you're more welcome to call me. Um, well, I ain't never had anyone tell me that. <laughs> All right. okay. You know where to find me. <laughs> All right, okay. Absolutely, but uh, yeah. I'll go with you, I'll go with you. I appreciate that, yeah. I appreciate that. I'll do that. And if there's things on your mind or things you, need, you think I should know about the neighborhood, let me know. That actually be the first Latino Democrat to ever win an election at this level uh, and be the first one to serve in the North Carolina General Assembly. White power, mother. White power! All right, matter. All right. When you begin to learn the true history here and hear stories of people like white outlaw that were lynched in the same place where the Confederate monument currently stands. We know that that very much is in the water of Alamance County. When we think about some of the policies of our sheriff. A local sheriff in North Carolina is on trial over racial profiling. The Justice Department is looking into, quote, allegations of discriminatory policing and unconstitutional searches and seizures by members of the Alamance County Sheriff's Office. The people that we're trying to hold here are criminal, illegal immigrants that is actually raping our citizens in many, many ways. My parents fled a civil war in El Salvador, in Central America, in 1980. My parents decided to settle in rural North Carolina like a lot of other Latino immigrant families in the South. I just really had to learn how to adapt as a kid, as a student, in my public schools, an English world and a Spanish world, a, a world where I was trying to understand sort of the, the racial tensions of America and, and what it meant to be different, what it meant to be Latino in the rural South. Hi, I'm Representative Steve Ross. As a lifelong resident of Alamance County, it is an honor to serve the citizens of House District 63. So my opponent is Steve Ross, who is the incumbent Republican here in District 63 and is running for, I believe it's his fifth term. I've worked hard to help build, rebuild Main Street. Uh, I've worked hard on economic development. I've brought jobs to my, to my district. On the 29th, I will be uh, driving to an appointment with USCIS, which is basically immigration. Um, and I will be um, finalizing the, the last step for naturalization. And if everything goes well, I will be, be becoming a citizen that day. So I'm pretty, pretty excited. It's been in the works for, for years. I've been a permanent resident for over three years now. And I hope that I'll be able to feel a little bit safer um, because it's definitely the last four years have been very heavy, especially since the last presidential election because a lot was in the table in terms of safety and, and feeling that I could plan ahead and, um, and have a life, you know. Early voting ends on October 31st. So if I become a citizen on the 29th, it's just perfect timing. Otherwise, I would not be able to vote. Hello, young man. All right. Hey. So good. good to see you. Good to see you. It's like the gang is back. <laughs> Hey, again. <laughs> There's 24 doors, and they're all right here on Apple Street. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. I'd I love to do that. Would be too. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
it is get out the vote time so we are canvassing democrats and unaffiliated voters that uh haven't voted yet and so we have a list of folks who haven't voted and folks who have voted we're talking to as many people as possible right now Do you have a plan on voting this election? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you know what day you're, you're heading out to the polls? I'm actually going to go this Thursday, as a matter of fact. Oh, that's great. That's <laughs> great. No sé si usted o gente en su casa puede votar esta elección. Okay. 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 Sí, sí. Todavía no. Sí, sí. No, mis papás de son de San Salvador y hasta 2016, hace cuatro años, pudieron votar por la primera vez. San Salvador. Sí. ¿De qué parte de Salvador? De San Salvador. Sí, de la capital. Yo soy Vicente. Oh, ¿en serio? Uh -huh. Oh, wow. Yo, mi hermano. Todos. Hay varios. Aquí en España, un lado alboreño. Sí, aquí. Un trabajo con dos, tres, wow. siete alboreños. Nunca hemos tenido salvadoreño en la política aquí en Carolina. Oh, Entonces, okay. díganle que ahora es el tiempo, ahora es el chance. <laughs> Tell my wife this yesterday that I, you know, try to pretend like I'm okay with the outcome either way, but. I obviously really want to win. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, caring and having hope is feels scary right now. Vulnerability, period, is, is difficult, but for an entire community to be watching, it's like, I'm not gonna lie, it's, um, it's a little nerve wracking. Hey babe, do you want bread or do you want tortilla? Do you want bread or quieres tortilla? Okay, cool. I've been counting the days for this, for this time to come, but I also feel, I just want to get there and come out and know that if it happened, if it does, <laughs> I'm, I'm just like nervous about something going wrong. We need one more vote. <laughs> Green card, passport, it's in my purse. It was very emotional. It was a big step in a way, like it didn't feel real. This is a major event that I know that means that I'm safe, that I have that stability that many people should be able to get as well and they're not given that opportunity. And earlier this year, I lost my dad to COVID-19. And so that was like in my mind that he didn't get to hear and see and know. Um, that this was happening and when he passed that was like the first thing that like I thought of like he's not gonna be here for my major life events anymore that felt really uh, just really hard Fifty-fifty right now. I mean, my gut is is fifty-fifty. Um, I know we've worked. I know we've worked really hard, but we're in Alamance County. Ricky's a first-time candidate, and he's Latino. And you know, we've had to overcome his lack of name recognition against a four-term incumbent. 
there's a part of me that really wants to believe it's going to happen this time. It's the day before the election. Monday night. I just finished my last lit drop uh, to get folks out to the polls for tomorrow. Uh, we just had a really rough weekend in Alamance County where peaceful marchers heading to the polls were pepper sprayed. Uh, it was a use of force by the law enforcement here that was so unnecessary and so unprovoked. And it sort of shows you this battle of an old Alamance versus a new Alamance. And uh, yeah, I believe a new day will come regardless of the outcome tomorrow. Good to see you. Y'all want some donuts? Oh, uh, I would love one. Of course. Y'all want some donuts? Yeah. Just making sure we're keeping the volunteers happy. Okay. Y'all, y'all working hard today. Y'all, we we trying to. How uh, how you doing? Pretty good. Well, you know, I'm feeling good. I'm we've like we've worked hard. <laughs> <laughs> we've worked hard for. Set the phone. Voting's looking good. We need one more good day, and I think it's ours. So. Okay. been to about four or five precincts and turnout has been pretty light. Lower turnout on election day might be good for us because we currently, at least on paper, have the edge. If this is a light turnout, it might, might be in our favor. This will be the longest day of our lives. So. <laughs> Can you believe it, babe? It is election night! We've been waiting for this day for like 500 days. Well, I gotta go look at these, some of these results. Yeah. I mean, it, early voting should drop in about 10 minutes, right? 8.15. Yeah. It's up there. How do you feel? Excited. You see? That's close. How much percentage is reported? Right now, this is the early vote coming in, but um, there's a lot of votes. Right now, it looks like, I think I saw that he's leading by maybe a couple thousand. We just need to have enough cushion so that when the rest of the vote comes in from election day, that we, we cover whatever was cast in election day. Oh, that's here. Completely Yes. Oh, that's good. Yes, that's good. Yeah. That's good. It updated. Look at it's my number. You hit our win number. That's right. Wait, I don't have my glasses on. It's twenty-two six four. What's the what's the actual vote difference? A percent. One percent. It's like four hundred. Is that everybody in? And it that says a hundred percent. I calculated it last night. That's okay. Then we have to count the provisional. Oh Unofficially. Oh my God! Thank you. I'm happy. <laughs> Unofficially. Unofficially. <laughs> Unofficially. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? A picture? What are we doing? Say something. It's too close to concede and it's too close to declare a victory. It's 400 votes, but we're up and I'm winning. So. <laughs> so, there's still mail-in ballots to count. Uh -huh. 
and provisionals. So this is probably going to drag out for another week or two. Yeah. But if it stays the way we are right now, we should win. So. Yeah. <laughs>